Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. When it comes to making money and starting a business, there are two schools of thought. One is to enter an existing industry and trying to rise above the competition. Another school of thought is to venture into the unknown and build something new, exciting, and bold. Like that guy who figured out how to make a grilled cheese in a toaster by putting it on its side. Ingenious, but also responsible for a lot of house fires. Apparently, toasters, like babies, can and will spontaneously combust when they're put on their sides. Who knew? So, as you can see, the second school of thought is much riskier, but yields much greater rewards. And there's no one in the Star Wars galaxy who knows that better than Lando Calrissian. A man known for throwing lavish parties one day, and then roaming around penniless in some sketchy cantina the next. And the reason for this man's extreme changes in wealth all leads to his insane business ideas. Today we're going to talk about the five craziest ones, and we'll be doing our own analysis about how smart these investments are by rating them from one to five. Ever wonder why the remote Outer Rim planet of Lothal was so important that it was given an entire cartoon TV series? Well, you see, Lothal has a huge deposit of very important metals known as dunium. Dunium was an incredibly strong material and oftentimes used in capital ship production. It's what gives the Imperial class Star Destroyer its grayish color. This same material also happened to be used to build the Death Star and help shield the hypermatter reactor core and focusing disk. Naturally, during the rising tensions during the earlier years of the Galactic Civil War, Lothal became a very important planet because of its raw resources. Along with various mining operations popping up, several weapons manufacturers also started creating factories on the planet. Lando Calrissian had recently been on a losing streak, having lost the Falcon and several other business interests, and was looking to put his life as a smuggler behind him. He was now calling himself an entrepreneur, and his first investment would be in Lothal. Unfortunately, Imperial regulations made it illegal for private citizens to mine in Lothal, and the Empire had nationalized all the mining interests on the planet. Lando wasn't all that deterred. He tried to look for a more unorthodox method of mining that couldn't be easily detected. First, he purchased a plot of land from a local Lothal crime lord called Vizago. Then he enlisted the help of a local rebel cell known as the Spectres in order to con a slave trader into giving him a very special piece of mining equipment known as a puffer pig. Like truffle pigs here on Earth, puffer pigs are not only adorable, but one of the few animals I recommend you not eating. You see, puffer pigs had extremely sensitive noses and were extremely capable at detecting precious minerals. So remember, their nose was 12 times more powerful than your average mining scanner, and much more low-key. It's a lot less suspicious to be walking a cute little pig around your property than having tons of mining survey equipment. The only problem is getting your pig past the Imperial blockade over the planet. So, how do we rate this investment? Well, property rights on Lothal are relatively cheap, and while puffer pigs are relatively expensive, they definitely are a worthy investment if they can be properly trained to find Eudonium. The biggest hurdle, though, is actually mining the stuff in a large enough quantity and then selling it without being caught by the Imperials. And that's a big if. But because of the low startup cost of this venture and high reward if it does succeed, I give this investment choice a rating of 3 out of 5. After a small experiment with puffer pigs and dunium, he decided to go into a more lucrative mining contract. Eventually, Lando would end up winning control of Cloud City in a Sabak game. Cloud City was a giant floating platform that was a part of a larger Tabana gas mining operation over the gas giant of Bespin. Tabana gas was one of the most important propellants in the entire galaxy. It was put into cartridges and used as ammunition in a variety of different firearms. It was also used to fuel hyperdrives and at the same time a useful coolant for repulsor lifts. Bespin happened to have a huge concentration of the gas in its upper atmosphere, which made its mining colony extremely rich. As the Baron Administrator of Cloud City, Lando's job was to make sure things ran smoothly and that the mining operation was efficient and profitable. During this time, the Galactic Empire was aggressively nationalizing all industries that were related to the military-industrial complex. That included Tabana gas mining. But since Bestman's operation was still considered on the small scale, they had so far remained under the radar of Imperial officials. Besides mining, the city was also a popular tourist attraction. Cloud City was located in the life zone of the planet and had breathable air. The top 50 levels of the city were dedicated to tourism and included many luxurious hotels, malls, and casinos for the visitors to enjoy. And because Lando was running the operation, the whole place just oozed class and refinement. The lower levels were populated by Ugnats, who kept the city operational and floating above the clouds on a bank of repulsor lifts. Eventually, the Empire would take over Cloud City and they would run it for a few years, but after the Battle of Endor, Lando would get the New Republic to help him reclaim Cloud City. I would rate this as one of Lando's best investments. First, he really didn't risk much, just a few credits in a Sabak game. And Cloud City is an obvious win. 
Its demonic gas mining operation was extremely profitable because all the gas was in the upper layers of the atmosphere. Accessible resources equals lower operations costs and increased profits. Cloud City also had an added bonus of being an incredibly high-end luxury tourist destination. The only thing better than one revenue stream is multiple ones. Diversifying your wealth is always a good idea. I give Lando a 5 out of 5 for this investment idea. In Legends, around the time of the Battle of Yavin, Lando was looking for another investment opportunity. This time around, he was looking at a property known as Hologram Fun World, a floating space station that was home to several interesting attractions. There was Anywhere World, an installation that housed many holograms of different places in the galaxy. The holograms were so realistic that viewers actually felt like they were on the planets that they were seeing. A lot of Alleranians liked coming here after their planet mysteriously disappeared. And then there was the Nightmare Machine, which scanned individuals' brains and then used holograms to display their biggest fears. At its peak, Hologram Fun World was attracting hundreds of thousands of visitors each day. But upon closer inspection, Lando realized that most of these tourists were actually projected by holograms. Apparently, Hologram Fun World had been hit hard by the Galactic Recession, and because it was located in the Outer Rim, not many real tourists were actually willing to make the long trip to the park. Lando also found out that the Nightmare Machine ride had been hijacked by a mad Imperial scientist who was conducting an experiment with a telepathic monster who read people's minds and then projected terrible nightmares into their brain. The scientists had kidnapped a bunch of tourists and had hooked them up permanently to the monster machine. Lando managed to kill the beast, but was captured by Imperial stormtroopers guarding this operation. Despite his extremely terrible experience at Hologram Fun World, he would once again return after the Battle of Endor. He ended up buying the park, but shortly after he sold it and then built his own amusement park called Sky Center Galleria. Now, amusement parks are always a tough investment, especially if your galaxy is constantly at war and encounters several economic recessions due to the tendency of its inhabitants to pool a ridiculous amount of resources into large constructs that are easily destroyed by terrorists and, and then, of course, not ensuring said huge constructs in case of such attacks. On top of that, Hologram Fun World's sketchy history and outer rim location makes it a pretty risky investment. Although, Lando probably did buy this property in order to learn more about the industry before building his own amusement park. We're not really sure if he lost money or gained money after flipping this property, but there are definitely easier ways to get hands-on experience running an amusement park. We consider this a pretty risky investment and rate it poorly with a 2 out of 5. After finishing his odd adventure in that really terrifying amusement park, Lando decides to return to what he knows best, which is mining. He starts what I consider one of the coolest business ventures on this list, Nomad City. Nomad City was a gigantic mobile moving city slash mining platform that was built on top of 40 AT-AT walker platforms. The city itself was centered around a 600 meter long dreadnought class heavy cruiser from the old Republic era. The reason Lando built this mobile mining platform was because he wanted to mine the planet Niklon. Niklon was extremely rich in rare metals but was extremely close to its star which made it impossible for a permanent mining colony to be established on the surface of the planet. Only the night side of the planet was cool enough for mining operations. But Lando's Nomad City platform could constantly be on the move and therefore could stay in the shadow of the planet indefinitely. Lando also constructed several gigantic shield ships that could travel to the planet from cooler parts of the system. The shield ship would block solar radiation and heat for smaller ships in its shadow. The biggest danger with this investment was that Nomad City could break down and then rotate to the daylight side of the planet and then burn up from the intense heat. And this eventually does happen when Thrawn launches an assault on the platform in order to steal some mining equipment. When all the easy to reach resources are gone, we, we still have to find ways to extract resources from increasingly difficult areas, no matter how dangerous it is. Despite the fact that Lando would lose Nomad City in a Sabacc game, I still think it's a great investment despite all of the risks involved in mining a planet so close to a star. Lando was able to not only successfully extract materials, he was also able to develop some very advanced technology to pull off such an impressive stunt. While he lost money in this venture, he also became a pioneer in a new type of mining and should be able to attract many investors for future operations or at least serve as an advisor for other mining operations who are trying to launch their own venture. I give this investment idea a 4 out of 5. The Kessel Spice Mines are famous for a variety of reasons. For one, it was one of the primary sources in the galaxy for raw spice, which then was converted into a variety of very expensive and addictive drugs. The other thing that made Kessel stand out was the numerous prison camps that inhabited the planet's surface. These prisoners, along with slaves shipped into the system, were primarily used for extracting spice. This was a dangerous prospect. For instance, the raw material from which glitter stim was produced from was created by a gigantic monstrous spider known as an energy spider. These spiders would occasionally descend on Kessel miners and suck their life energy out of them. The planet was also extremely cold and had a very thin atmosphere that was supplemented by oxygen generators. 
Despite all these drawbacks, Kessel was still a very lucrative planet to own, especially after the Galactic Empire had collapsed and the Imperials no longer controlled it. Lando saw an opportunity and won it in a hostile takeover, which involved a Death Star light superweapon and a fleet of smuggler ships, along with a lot of shenanigans. After gaining control of the planet, Lando made many improvements, including getting rid of the slaves. Not only was it not moral to have slaves, they were also less efficient than the droids he would replace them with. He also appointed his pal Nian Nub, a Solistan, who happened to love being underground to run the whole operation. The Kessel Spice Mines would become extremely profitable. Although Lando did field most of the upfront costs for reopening Kessel, he managed to seize it during a good time and ended up not really paying for the planet at all. With good business practices and lifelong experience in mining, Lando made a terrific investment by snatching up the Kessel Spice Mine. We give this operation a 5 out of 5. So tallying up all of Lando's craziest investments, we still get an average score of 3.8 out of 5, which is excellent. If we look at Lando's investments, we see a pattern. Besides that one weird investment in the amusement park, all of his investments involve mining in one way or another, which is basically my first piece of advice. Invest in what you know. The more knowledge you have about an industry, the better informed you are when you're putting your money into something. The second thing we notice is that Lando is willing to take risks and invest in pretty daring and at times dangerous ideas, which is lesson two. The less regulated and less known an industry is, the more room there is for quick growth and volatility. The third lesson is that Lando runs his investments in a moral way and makes sure never to be a micromanager. He also usually finds capable administrators to take over when he's acquired a new business, which is something we can all learn from. Building a company on strong moral foundation early on means less problems down the road. Assigning capable administrators means you won't have to bog down your operations by micromanaging everything, which also gives you the freedom to focus on other investments. Despite being a complete scoundrel and a terrible gambler, Lando is actually an excellent businessman, and I think he's a great study for all of you future potential investors out there. So don't be afraid to learn from him. Think outside the box, never work for anyone else but yourself, and always wear a cape. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Let me know in the poll above what you think about Lando's investment. Which one do you think was the best idea? Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification button so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. We're gonna be doing a lot of coverage for Solo Star Wars Story, which is coming out very soon. Well guys, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.